Hey, what's up guys? It's Midwestern RC. Today we're just going to be doing a gentle bash with the Outcast 8S and we're going to be talking about something that I don't think is discussed in this hobby much. It's called hobby shaming. I don't know if it's like an actual term or not. Um, I'll explain soon and we'll see what you guys think. Alright, so we have my bone stock, meaning nothing upgraded on it, Outcast 8S. I have a pair of Gen Zace 4S basher pro lipos in it um the only things that i personally changed to the car i swapped this uh the shock fluid out for 30 weight so the shock shafts have a less chance of bending i turned the bec voltage up to 8.4 just so the fans are more powerful and the steering is more responsive and i gotta say the steering is night and day difference with 8.4 volts Oh, and I put the punch up to four, stock is three, and it makes a huge difference. I'm actually glad I didn't go to the max, which is five. This thing's nuts. Uh, and I have earplugs in the center diff, uh, 100K in the front, 100K in the rear, service them myself. So, all right, so let's get into it, the discussion. Hobby shaming. I don't know if it's a term I made up. I don't know if someone else said it and I just heard it but hobby hobby shaming is what I define as it is what it sounds when you have a hobby that let's face it you are susceptible to shame so like video gaming RC cars anything that can be deemed like nerdy and you're uh, afraid to share it with coworkers. You're afraid to share it with family even sometimes. Uh, I mean, I gotta, I'm not gonna lie. Like if I would have gotten into this and uh, it was right before my girlfriend and I started dating, I probably wouldn't be talking about this too much. Oh, this thing is stable with that 30 weight. Literally on a driving range. I'm sure these guys are happy, but I don't care about them. So here's a few things. As a 32-year-old adult who plays with toys, the thing about hobby shaming is you just have to not care. When I was in my 20s, I used to give a shit about everything. I used to like be so critical of myself. I would care what other people thought of me. And flat out, I just, I don't anymore. I mean, if I wouldn't have gotten into this hobby again after a really long hiatus, about 15 years, which the backstory on that, um, my father passed away about a year and a half ago in April. Uh, we were never really close. Oh, nice wheelie. We were never really close, but one thing that we really liked enjoying together when I was younger was RC cars. Uh, the old Tamiya Blackfoot. Um, we had a nitro boat actually, which was super cool. Um, I had a nitro truck that I used to mow lawns for and then save up and, you know, do all that. So after my dad passed, just to like, uh, I don't know, have like the memory go on, you know. Um, it was a year and a month ago that I bought an Arma Granite. And now I have 20 RC cars. I have 70,000 Instagram followers. Money. Money. Um, started the YouTube channel, which I'm trying my best to do pretty good with this and uh, make it something that can either pay me in one of two ways by, by getting free cars or uh, getting paid. I do consults for like Instagram for people, help them like grow their Instagram. And that goes for anything else in life, you know, like when you're passionate about something, trust me, like put 110% effort into it. And that is something that my dad, my dad taught me, you know? Um, another lesson that he taught me that I always am just gonna take with me is uh, anything negative in life, you gotta try at some point to find the good in it. Like it's, it's in there, but sometimes you just gotta dig a little deeper and the lesson learned is just perspective is everything. I mean, this thing could break right now and I'd be like, crap, it broke, like I'm sad, whatever, I'm angry. 
but honestly, I really enjoy working on these things. So there's garage time right there, you know. All right, so speaking of breaking things, we're gonna jump this. Those little jumps that you guys saw earlier is like the first little jumps that I've done with this thing. I don't wanna send this thing to the moon just yet, but I do wanna, I do wanna just do some nice, smooth, easy jumps. I know these cars can be kind of fragile, hence why I'm trying to be cautious, but oh wow, this, this thing in, in grass or on the road with earplugs in the center, <laughs> when it's got some speed already, there we go, that's what I like. When it's got some speed in it and you just freaking punch it, it just rips and grips like. This is the stock gearing. Uh, I got this truck used, so I don't have the speed gear with it. I might get one, get a nice set of fans for this thing, and then just keep enjoying it. All right, you always gotta check. I've said this in other videos, if you're new to the channel. If you hit someone with one of these things, I work in an emergency room, by the way, it's not gonna be good, and you're gonna get in trouble for it. Nice. So this thing is a little harder to control in the air compared to like an Outcast 4S or a 6S, which I have a 4S, I've owned a 6S. I don't really regret selling RCs or trading them, but I really regret I broke something for sure. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Come on, stop cartwheeling. All right, we're gonna check it. But anyways, uh, my Outcast 6S, BLX, whatever, EXB, one of these. Incredible vehicle. Um, you really should get the hot racing steering knuckles for it. And the M2C, um, this thing, that's really all you need. Throw the speed pinion on there, throw a nice fan on there, you're set. You can bash the crap out of those things. So I know these trucks are fragile. We're just gonna give it a little quick once over. I would rather just take a look at it, see if anything's broken. Oh, I thought the A-arm was cracked, but it's just shadow from grass. I don't know how well you guys can see. I do have my camera on my forehead. See those wheels moving? That's the AVC. AVC is active vehicle control, so it kind of counter steers for you. Uh, you can turn it up or down on your remote. Some people like it, some people don't. My pillow balls, a little loose. You kind of got to maintain those, so I'm not too surprised on that. Um, wow, this thing took that landing. And you guys saw how many cartwheels that thing did. So we're just gonna get back into it. But yeah, this thing's uh, different in the air. Um, I think taking ramps straight on is pretty important as I think that's what made it cartwheel. I mean, I'm gonna review the footage and know for sure. All right, if it didn't break back there, it might break right now. We're gonna give this one send off here, two if it goes right, and then just give you a little montage. All right, that went well. Like this thing, this thing gets my heart going, man. Like when you're moving around a big, I think 30 pound right here, this is how much these weigh with batteries in them vehicle at like 45 50 miles an hour it's an adrenaline rush i mean if you're new to rc and if you've never experienced something like this too you gotta try it work extra jobs i don't know do whatever you can make the money and then talk to me about it you know follow me on instagram handles right there i love talking to people i literally respond to every message that i get except for the people that ask me for free cars which is a uh, half the population of um a country in asia that's all i'm gonna say it's really annoying because they just think that you're some like rich american which i'm definitely not and that you're you have a uh, rc cars at your disposable just give out it's like 
no, like get a job, move to a different country. I don't care, not my problem. Like they get aggressive, man. They get like angry that you're not giving them something for free. Or I get messages like this one where I'm apparently supposed to bring you to this country. No. So, so far with, with this car, if you're on the fence about one, get it. You can enjoy these things without sending them to the moon. I'm kind of proving that right now. You don't need to like be rich duper bash. You don't need to, you know, do any of that. Those guys, you know, so much respect for what they do. Um, and most of their trucks are like fully modified and they're good. You will break less stuff if you don't crash as much. So yeah, more on the hobby shaming thing. Um, I kind of... Did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? Man, I mean, I have coworkers that like have hobby shamed me. It's always female nurses, by the way, because um, I work in an ER. Which I, I know I've already said that. Uh, but I'm like, what's your hobby school? Or what's your, uh, what's your hobby? Like getting your nurse practitioners, just like everybody else, being hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, like being a slave to like the education system. I mean, like I have a house, I have a brand new Accord. Oh, uh, there it is. It runs 12 seconds of the quarter mile. I'm a paramedic technician. I make good money for what I do, uh, but I don't have student loans, so. Oh my gosh. Oh, it broke. Yep, it broke. All right, let's take a look at the carnage. And then we're gonna end the video for obvious reasons. Let's see. Um, it appears to have pulled the hinge pin out. And this link came off right there. I'm sure I can pop that back on. The shock shaft, oh, let's check the axles. I know these axles can be soft. The axle seems straight, the axle seems fine. And the shock shaft, the shock shaft is straight. Oh, one of the um, shock cups fell off. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get one of those. My hobby shop is a Napa shop never any parts available so i'm guessing they don't have one little bonus clip update on the carnage i actually found the shock cup i don't know what this thing is called i gotta look it up it's called this so you kind of just trace back to where it crashed you just zigzag up and down you can usually find parts i mean this thing's a big vehicle so i knew i'd you know not have too many issues finding this but yeah I found it and I think I'm gonna be able to go home and fix it because nothing actually broke. These parts just kind of separated. So that's cool, right? But that's what happens when you send them the, send these things to the sky. They're big, massive vehicles, but yeah, Arma tough. All right, guys, Midwest NRC, do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. If you watched to the end of this video, I appreciate that. Until next time, see you guys later.